For this lab, imagine that you're a full engineer working in the field. Your company has experienced field failures with a heat-treated tritrain component. The design engineers specified a case depth of 4 mm with a minimum hardness of 40 HRC. You are given a mounted sample of the component and you must determine if this part meets the specifications and you should provide evidence along with it. But what is this case depth? Well, many engineering components are specially treated to produce a harder outer casing. Components such as gears, splines, dry shafts and bearings are often surface hardened by carburizing, nitriding, or other processes which increase the concentration of elements at harden. This process will harden the material to some depth below the surface. And this region is what we call the case. Let's use this lollipop as an analogy. You can see that this outer surface will be hard because of the candy, while the inside will be soft because of the gum. The thickness of the outer candy, that's what we can call the case depth. You can see that materials that are hardened, their outer surface will be much more harder than the inside. And this is the process that several materials go in order to develop a case depth. But how does this process take place? How do we get the case depth? Well, let's look at carburizing, for example. In carburizing, basically what we are doing is we are adding carbon onto the surface of the material to make it harder. We need to place our component in a carbon-rich environment. For example, an oven filled with carbon monoxide gas. As we heat up the gas, a chemical process will start to happen and carbon will be released. Then, through the process of diffusion, carbon will start to make its way into the steel. The longer we leave the component in the oven, the more carbon will be diffused into it. And with the more carbon diffused, the higher or the bigger our case depth will be. And as our case depth gets bigger, the harder the surface of the material will get. So if you want to have a bigger case depth, you need to leave the material inside the oven for a longer period of time. To check for the actual dimensions of the case depth, we need to use micro hardness testing. Micro hardness testing is a hardness measurement made using a special optical instrument. The area sample by a micro hardness tester is much smaller than that of a Rockwell type testers and the position control is extremely fine. In fact, individual features such as grains and inclusions can be often analyzed using this type of tester. With the help of this instrument, you can map the hardness profile across a component. And this permits the identification of the work hardened zone or the depth of hardening in a case hardened component. In other words, with the micro hardness testing, you are able to determine the depth of the case meaning that you can see the drop of hardness from one end to the other of the component and you can determine where exactly the case depth starts and ends. One way to calculate the hardness is using the Vickers technique. This one differs from the Rockwell type machines in that it uses a depth load to push a diamond indenter into the surface of the specimen. The depth of penetration is determined by measuring the diagonals of the pyramidal indentation after load removal, rather than the depth of travel during the load application. The Shimatsu HMV G21D micro hardness tester uses a diamond pyramid indenter to perform the Vickers test and it may be used to determine a wide range of hardness values through adjustment of the applied load. Meaning that the Shimatsu hardness tester that we use in the lab already does these calculations for you. The relationship for the Vickers hardness is as follows, where F is the test force in newtons and D is the average of the two diagonal lengths in millimeters. If the appropriate tables are available, you can convert from the Vickers hardness to any other type of hardnesses, such as HRC. Okay, so to begin the lab, we are first going to get our, our uh, specimen over here. We, this is our um, drive train component. You can see this gear. 
Um, it has been used already, but this is the one we're going to be using. So you can see that this has been cut, and this is you know the inside of it, the face. Uh, you can even see how the outside is a darker color than the inside. Um, it may have a little bit of rust, but you can see how it's actually a little bit um, clearer. Uh, it, it's uh, more silver than the one on the outside. It was a little bit more darker, and that's because uh, we're uh, explaining, you know, that's the carbon content on the surface. So we're basically going to be cutting one of these teeth. We're going to be cutting one of these teeth over the gear using the wet saw. Uh, and then after we get one of the teeth, we are going to be mounting uh, that tooth uh, onto a little black um, cylinder that will help us, you know, when we want to make our hardness determination. So we're gonna get that tooth, we're gonna polish it, we are going to uh, make sure that all the face, it's nice, it's clear, it's uh, really well, uh, really flat and really shiny so that we don't find any imperfections or impurities on the surface. And once we get it like that, you will see an example in a little bit, we will use that on our Shimatsu Micro Hardness Tester to find the hardness map across the surface of one of these teeth. So you're gonna see we're gonna measure the hardness from we're gonna want to determine the hardness from this end to this end of one of the teeth that we cut. Okay, so we have our, man, our uh, sample, we have already cut it, we already mounted it, and you can see that we have this uh, black uh, cylinder. This is where we mounted our tooth. You can see it here. Uh, that's our tooth, we are, it's already polished, it's already mounted, and this is where we are going to be using over here in our uh, micro hardness tester, the Shimatsu. So I'm going to place um, my sample here and you can see that's already a green light there so I'm gonna set it up um, these are our uh, knob for our axis this one moves it up and down this one uh, back and forth and this one will move it side to side so this is the one that we need to move um, one full rotation will be half a millimeter so this is the one that we need to be rotating so that we can get our sample moving uh, testing from the, the, the right all the way to the left side of our specimen. Okay, so I'm going to do one test for the hardness. So you can see my sample, it's placed, it's the green light, that's what we are seeing on the screen. Uh, so it's everything set, everything's good. So I will come to the computer, I will press on uh, test, all of my settings are good, so I will press test yes so now you can see the camera switch so what it's doing is the indenter the camera rotating and now the indenter moved in and now it's uh going down and it will start looking locating the surface and then it will make its indention and once it's done you can see over here is the detecting surface and then it will let us know it will take 10 seconds to do the load uh, and once it, it's done, it will return and go back and you guys can see the hole that it's made or the diamond, the, the diamond shape that it's made, that it's made, right? So that beep, you can see it, it's the lens is rotating and it's coming back and now we see our indention over here. You can see in the camera, it looks really better than even over here. Um, so now I will be measuring, this is where we do the biggest calculation, so if this was, um, if this was, you know, the old times, you will need to calculate the diagonals across it, reaching the Vickers equation, and then depending on the load that we're using, which is uh, 2.94 newtons, you can find the average uh, length of the diagonals, and you will be able to calculate the hardness in Vickers, and then convert it to HRC but thankfully the computer does that for us so i'm going to get this uh rectangle and i'm going to place it place it on the edges of the diamond so basically this is calculating the diagonals right the horizontal and the vertical one and as i'm doing this it's doing that calculation for us so it's there so you can see that we're getting a uh, HRV hardness of 679 or it's converted to a hardness in HRC of 59.2 uh, 
and this is you know characteristic of steel a hardness of 60 hrc so we are good you can see that this is the hardness right at the edge and you can see even we have the horizontal and vertical lengths and the average in micrometer so we're doing this in microns you need to convert this to millimeters you know and then we're going to be able using the vickers equation to calculate and you can do this these values will also be given to you here uh, and you should be able to get the same values over here uh, so we're done so in order to continue we are going to rotate this um, one full rotation so right now it's uh it's in between 35 and 37 we didn't zero this one at the beginning but as long as we are one full rotation uh, back to from where it was I think it was there we moved half a millimeter over here and now we have a new area to test and we'll repeat the process of pressing test and so on so uh, this once you do this you're able to get you know the hardness map like you show I showed you at the beginning uh, and from there we are going to be able to determine what the case dip is the part which has the highest hardness that will be how much we get of case depth and that's it for now now that you have completed the lab does this component meet the specifications does it have a case depth of four millimeters and does the minimum hardness is at least 40 hrc based on your analysis and calculations what would you recommend this company to do to continue using this piece or what other changes can be done to make this piece meet the specifications if they do.